On behalf of the Asian People's Movement on Deaf and Development, APMDB, NGO Forum on ADB, Recourse, and Orgeval, in association with the Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt, I welcome you uh, to this critical press conference on the brutal firing at workers who were um, protesting, but in a rightful manner, unarmed, and uh, for uh, things that they should have had anyway. Uh, this, of course, uh, happened at Bhash Khali uh, coal power plant in Chattogram in Bangladesh. And um, it is Ma Mahmoud Reza Mir Khan, uh, who was just 18, Ronnie Hussain is 22, Rahat also 22, Shuvo 24, and Raihan Hussain, who was just 17. Um, these five have primarily brought us together. And uh, they were killed, of course, uh, on the 17th of April, 2021, when they joined a procession demanding um, their just salaries uh, that hadn't been paid for two months. Um, in the past, also, their employers had not paid them salary for an extended amount of time. They were only paid um, delayed wages in February. They were also um, talking of being let off so that they could have their iftar. Of course, the month of Ramadan and prayer had begun. Uh, they wanted reduced working hours from, please note, 12 hours to eight hours. Um, uh, and and the right to go off at five so that they could have their iftar. Um, and they were also, of course, wanted their festival bonus for the upcoming Eid. All of them were unarmed. And uh, as we know, the 1,320 megawatt Pashkali uh, uh, coal-fired plant has been in the news in the past also. Um, and people killed in the past also in 2016-17. Uh, it's owned by the Bangladeshi conglomerate S. Alam Group, which is like a 70% owner, along with SEPCO 3 Electric Power Co uh, Construction Corporation of China, uh, which holds 20% stake, and HTG Development Group, also of China, that holds another uh, 10%. Uh, SEPCO 3 and HT, uh, HTG Development Group um, are also the EPC contractor for this power plant. Uh, the financiers, of course, are Bank of China, uh, which is the lead arranger of the syndicate loan uh, with Agricultural Bank of China, Exim Bank of China, China Construction Bank, China Development Bank, China Merchants Bank, and Pingan Bank. Uh, we hold all of these institutions collectively responsible for the um, current debt of 15 and for all of those who are struggling, of five, and for all of those who are struggling for their lives um, and who are in critical condition, wounded on the same day. Uh, the earlier killings of four villagers on the 4th of April 2016 and one on the 1st of February 2017 are also, of course, brought to mind. And I request all of us gathered here uh, to please pause for a moment in memory. And, um, and if we could um, silently remember these innocent victims uh, and also dedicate ourselves to seek justice on their behalf. Um, Let's do that right away. In memory of our slain brothers, uh, amongst them Mahmoud Reza Mir Khan, Roni Hussain, Rahat Shubo, Raihan Hussain, um, we now begin this press conference. I will um, go straight away for, to somebody from the affected community in Bash Khali. Uh, we have our local organizer, SM Nazir Hussain, who's uh, a vice president of um, an association there, uh, to please put us in touch with who will represent uh, the affected workers. Ami. Ami, far front day, Walter Hishabi. Ask a tin mash the Amicas could see. 
পাওয়ার প্লান্টে কাজটা করতেছে মূলত সেফ কর্তৃ কিন্তু ওরা নিজেরা কোন শ্রমিক নিয়োগ দেন ওখানে ইপিসি নামে একটা ঠিকাদার কোম্পানিকে শ্রমিক নিয়োগ দেওয়ার জন্য ওরা নিয়োগ করছে ইপিসি শ্রমিক নিয়োগের কন্ট্রাক্টটা এলাকার একটা সিন্ডিকেট কে সাব কন্ট্রাক্টে দিয়ে দিয়েছে এই এলাকার সিন্ডিকেট নিয়ন্ত্রণ করে এলাকার চেয়ারম্যান আরেকজন হচ্ছে মেম্বার ওনার নাম কামাল হোসেন চেয়ারম্যানের নাম হচ্ছে লিয়াকত আলী আর একজন স্থানীয় হচ্ছে আবু আহমদ এরা তিন চারজন মিলে একটা সিন্ডিকেট আছে ওরা ওখানে শ্রমিক নিয়োগ করে শ্রমিক নিয়োগ করার আগে শ্রমিক দের থেকে পাঁচ হাজার টাকা অগ্রিম নিয়ে ফেলে এবং পোশাক বাবদ ওরা দুই হাজার টাকা বেতন থেকে কেটে রাখে এবং প্রতি মাসে বেতন থেকে টেন পার্সেন্ট টাকা ওরা প্রত্যেকটা শ্রমিক থেকে কেটে রাখে লকডাউনের আগে প্রত্যেক শ্রমিককে বারো ঘন্টা করে ডিউটি করতে হতো কোনো উটি দেওয়া হতো না প্রত্যেকটা শ্রমিককে ওরা আঠারো হাজার থেকে টাকা করে বেতন দিত কিন্তু ডিউটির টাইম ছিল বারো ঘন্টা দুই শিফটে আর যখন করোনা আসছে লকডাউন শুরু হয়েছে তখন এই বারো ঘন্টা থেকে ডিউটির টাইম করছে দশ ঘন্টা এই দশ ঘন্টা এই বিষয়টা নিয়ে এখানে যেহেতু কোন শ্রমিক সংগঠন নাই এক একটা টিকেদারের আন্ডারে কতগুলো শ্রমিক কাজ করে এক একজন এক এক সাইডে তখন শ্রমিকরা সম্মিলিত ভাবে দাবি করল যে যেহেতু সামনে রমজান মাস সেজন্য তাদের ডিউটির টাইমটা আট ঘন্টা করা হোক আর সেটার উঠি দাবি করা হয়েছে অর্থাৎ অতিরিক্ত ঘন্টার টাকা তারা দাবি করছে এবং পাশাপাশি সামনে ইত উপলক্ষে আমরা বেতন পাতা অগ্রিম দাবি করছি কারণ বেতনটা দেওয়া হয় এক মাস তা ত্রিশ দিনের বেতনটা দেওয়া হয় চল্লিশ দিন পর বা পঁয়তাল্লিশ দিন পর অর্থাৎ এর পরের মাসে দশ তারিখ পনেরো তারিখের দিকে বেতন দেওয়া হয় তো এর পরে এইসব বিষয় নিয়ে যখন কোন শ্রমিক তাদের দাবি দেওয়া জানাই কোন একটা শ্রমিক বৈঠক করে তাদের এই যে বিভিন্ন ধরনের যে হেনাস্তা হচ্ছে ফার ফান্ডের অভ্যন্তরে স্থানীয় কিছু দালাল চক্রের মাধ্যমে এবং যারা টিকাদার কোম্পানি তাদের মাধ্যমে যখন এই যে টেন পার্সেন্ট বেতন কেটে নিয়ে ফেলতেছে পাঁচ হাজার টাকা অগ্রিম নিচ্ছে পোশাকের টাকা কেটে নিয়ে ফেলা হচ্ছে এবং বাধ্যগত ওদের ক্যান্টিন থেকে খাবার ডাবল দামে কিনতে হয় চেয়ারম্যান এবং মেম্বার ওই যে আবু আহমদ যার কথা বলতেছি তারা একটা দুইটা ক্যান্টিন দিয়েছে ওখানে ওই ক্যান্টিন থেকে অবশ্যই লাঞ্চের এবং রাতের কাবার দুপুরের কাবার এবং যাবতীয় নাস্তা ওই ক্যান্টিন থেকে সাপ্লাই দেওয়া হয় ওই ক্যান্টিন থেকে বেশি দামে দিয়ে কিনতে হয় এগুলো নিয়ে যারা প্রতিবাদ করে তাদেরকে সাথে সাথে সারাই করা হয় তাদের কোনো বেতন দেওয়া হয় না এবং শ্রমিকদেরকে নিয়োগ নিয়োগপত্র দেওয়া হয় না এটা মুখিক কন্টাক্টে সেখানে নিয়োগ দেওয়া হয় অস্থায়ীভাবে কোনো ধরনের শ্রমিক নিয়োগপত্র দেওয়া হয় না এমনি টেম্পোরালি একটা আইডি কার্ড দেওয়া হয় তো এই বিষয়গুলো নিয়ে দীর্ঘদিন শ্রমিকরা শান্তভাবে দাবি জানিয়ে আসছে কর্তৃপক্ষকে তখন তারা কোনো কর্ণপাত করে নাই এরপরে গত শুক্রবারে জুমার পরে শ্রমিকরা যখন সবাই কাজ পেলে নামাজ পড়তে গেছে তখন অনেকে হেনস্তার শিকার হয়েছে এবং পরের দিন শনিবারে সেই ঘটনার কারণে শ্রমিকরা যখন কারখানা আসছে আমরা সবাই কাজ বন্ধ করে দিচ্ছি কাজ বন্ধ করে দিয়ে আমরা সবগুলো শ্রমিক এক জায়গায় জড় হয়ে 
আমরা আমাদের প্রতিনিধির মাধ্যমে আমরা কবর পাড়াইছি যে আমাদের যদি দাবি পূরণ করা না হয় অথবা কর্তৃপক্ষ যদি আমাদের সাথে আজকে কথা না বলে তাহলে আমরা আজকে কাজ করব না আমরা কাজ থেকে বিরত থাকবো এইটা নিয়ে আমরা আমাদের প্রতিনিধিরা গেল তাদেরকে কোনো পাত্তা দেওয়া হলো না তখন আমাদের কাছে যখন ফিরে এসে এই কথাটা বললো যে ওনা ওনারা আমাদের কোনো কাজে কর্ণপাত করে না ওনারা আমাদেরকে সবাইকে কাজে ফিরে যেতে বলছে আমরা তখন কাজে ফিরে না গিয়ে আমরা সেখানে এটার প্রতিবাদে আমরা সেখানে বিক্ষোভ করলাম হঠাৎ করে সেখানে ফাঁসে পুলিশ পাড়ি আছে পুলিশ পাড়ি এবং এই যে আবু আহমদ লিয়াকত আলী এবং ওই মেম্বার কামালদের গঙ্গা পুলিশের পোশাক করে পুলিশ হয়ে এসে অতর্কিত দুই দিক থেকে আমাদের শ্রমিকদের উপর লাঠি ফেটা শুরু করলো শ্রমিকরা যে যেদিকে ফার্সে ফালাইছে এবং অনেকে আত্মরক্ষার্থে ইট পাটকেল ছুটছে এরপরে টিয়ার্স এর রাবার গ্যাস যখন ছুটছে শ্রমিকরা আরো বেশি কৃপ্ত হই আরো বেশি ইট পাটকেল ছুটছে এই টিয়ার্স এর রাগার পুলের মধ্যে তারা অতর্কিত গোলাগুলি শুরু করলো গোড়াগুলি শুরু করলো দেখলাম যে অনেকে লুটে পড়ে গেছে যে যেদিকে যেহেতু ওখানে অনেকগুলো লেবার শেড রয়েছে বিভিন্ন কন্টিনেন্ট দিয়ে বিভিন্ন অফিস রয়েছে বড় বড় আপনার ফাইভ রয়েছে ওখানে ফাইভের ভিতরে ফাইভের কন্টিনেন্টের নিচে এবং শেডের আর গুলো যে যেভাবে ফার্সে আত্মরক্ষা করছে তারপরও এস পরে চারজন শ্রমিক মারা গেছে এবং একজন শ্রমিককে মুমূর্ষ অবস্থায় নেওয়াতে পথে সে মারা গেছে আরো বিশজন শ্রমিক গুলো বিদ্ধ হয়েছে এবং ছুটাছুটি করতে গিয়ে অর্ধ শত শ্রমিক আহত হয়েছে এখন গতকালকে আমরা শুনলাম শ্রমিকদের বিরুদ্ধে দুইটা মামলা হয়েছে একটা মামলা করছে ওখানে যে বর্তমান কোর্ডিনেটর আছেন ফারুক আহমেদ উনি বাদী হয়ে ওনার বক্তব্য আমরা বিভিন্ন মিডিয়াতে শুনলাম উনি অলরেডি ওখানে স্থানীয় চেয়ারম্যান লিয়াকত আলীকে দোষারোপ করছে বিষয়টা নিয়ে উনি উসকে দিয়েছে শ্রমিককে এই কারণে এটা করছে এটা কিন্তু সত্য ঘটনা আর ওখানে এসআই যে পুলিশ পাড়ির যে এসআই বাসকালী থানার যে এসআই ওখানে পুলিশ পাড়িতে দায়িত্বরত রাশিদুজ্জামান বাদী হয়ে একটা মামলা করছে এখানে মামলায় দেখলাম যারা এই ঘটনা উসকে দিছে এবং যারা শ্রমিকদেরকে হেনাস্তা করছে শ্রমিকদেরকে আন্দোলন করতে যারা বাধ্য করছে তাদের কেউ এখানে আসামি নেই নিরহ কিছু মানুষ যাদেরকে আমরা চিনিও না কোনোদিন দেখি নাই এরকম কিছু মানুষকে দেখলাম এখানে আসামি করা হয়েছে মূল ঘটনাকে মূল হোতাকে আড়াল করার জন্য কিছু নতুন লোককে এখানে এনে জড়িয়ে তাদেরকে হেনাস্তা করা হচ্ছে আমরা সেটা আজকে পত্রিকার মাধ্যমে জানলাম আমরা নিজেরা অবাক হয়ে গেছি এখন ওখানে কোন শ্রমিক নেই যে যেভাবে পারছে সেখান থেকে আত্মরক্ষার্থে চলে গেছে যেহেতু মামলা হয়েছে পরবর্তী অনেকগুলো পুলিশ আছে র্যাব আছে বিজিবি আছে সেজন্য গণগ্রাফতারের বয়ে শ্রমিকরা ওখান থেকে আত্মগোপনে চলে গেছে আমরা নিজেরাই এখন বাড়ি করে নাই আমরা নিজেরাই আত্মগোপনে চলে আসছি কারণ এখানে নির্দিষ্ট কোন শ্রমিক সংগঠন নাই যে আমরা একটা সংগঠনের অধীনে গিয়ে আবার পুনরায় একটা সমতায় যাব এখন আমরা শুনতেছি শ্রমিকদের পক্ষ হয়ে যারা পাওয়ার প্লান্টের এসালামের সাথে এবং যে সেফকো ত্রিশ সাথে যে সাইনাদের সাথে শ্রমিক প্রতিনিধি হয়ে নাকি একটা সমতার কথা বলতেছে ওরা শ্রমিকদের কোনো প্রতিনিধি না আমরা ওদেরকে চিনিও না কারণ মূল শ্রমিক যারা মূল প্রতিনিধি যারা তাদেরকে ওখানে ঢুকতে দেওয়া হচ্ছে না সবাই আত্মগণে চলে গেছে কারণ কেউ যদি ওখানে উপস্থিত হয় ততক্ষণে তোমাকে গ্রেপ্তার করা হবে কারণ এখানে পশু র্যাব পুলিশ ওখানে ডিউটি রত আসছে রাত্রে ওরা বিভিন্ন অভিযানে যায় খবর পেলে ওরা অ্যারেস্ট করবে এই বয়ে কেউ আর ওই এলাকায় নেই আমরা সবাই আত্মগোপনে চলে গেছি তা আমরা আপনাদের মাধ্যমে আমরা জানাতে চাচ্ছি যে ওখানে যেহেতু পুলিশ এবং স্থানীয় যে সেন্ডিকেট তারা যে ঘটনাটা সংগঠিত করছে আমরা পত্রিকা মারফত যেটা জানলাম যে ওখানে জেলা প্রশাসক কর্তৃক সাত সদস্যের বিষয়ে একটা তদন্ত কমিটি এবং অতিরিক্ত ডিআইজির মাধ্যমে তিন সদস্যের বিষয়ে একটা কমিটি গঠন করা হয়েছে এইটা ওরা যারা ঘটনার সাথে জড়িত ওরা যদি তদন্ত করে তাহলে প্রকৃত আলামত প্রকৃত ঘটনা এটা ফুটে উঠবে না এটা ভিন্ন কাতে নিয়ে যাবে অলরেডি আমরা বিভিন্ন কিছু পত্রিকা সঠিক নিউজ লেখছে আর কিছু পত্রিকা পক্ষপাতিত্ব নিউজ লেখছে আমরা বিষয়টা দেখলাম এটা অর্থাৎ লিয়াকত আলী আবু আহমদ কামালদেরকে আড়াল করার জন্য এই ঘটনাটা ঘটতেছে যারা সেন্ডিকেট ওই সেন্ডিকেট যারা 
এটা দীর্ঘদিন ধরে অর্থাৎ দুই হাজার ষোলো সালে চার এপ্রিল এখানে চারজন গ্রামবাসী নিহত হয়েছে দুই হাজার সতেরো সালের ফেব্রুয়ারি মাসে আরেকটা সংঘর্ষে একজন মারা গেছে ফোনের জন্য মতো গুলিবিদ্ধ ছিল আহত ছিল আবার দুই হাজার একুশ সালে এই গত পশ্চিম সতেরো এপ্রিল আবার নতুন করে আরেকটা ঘটনা তারা ঘটালো শ্রমিকরা নিজেদের অধিকার নিয়ে একটা শান্তিপূর্ণ দাবি জানিয়েছে সেইটাকে তারা উসকে দিয়ে ইট পাটকেল রাবার বুলট গ্যাস এগুলো ছুটে পিছন থেকে গুলি করে শ্রমিকদেরকে অতর্কিত হামলা করে খেপে দিয়েছে শ্রমিকদেরকে যদি কোন ধরনের অতর্কিত হামলা করা না হতো গ্যাস টিয়ার সেল এগুলো যদি নিক্ষেপ করা না হতো তাহলে শ্রমিকদের কোনোদিন ইট পাটকেল মারতো না ওইদিন যদি শ্রমিকদের সাথে যদি বলতো যে ঠিক আছে তোমরা কাজে ফিরে যাও কোন একজন অফিসার এসে কোন একজন প্রতিনিধি যদি এসে বলতো যে তোমরা কাজে ফিরে যাও তোমাদের এই দাবি দেওয়াটা আমরা উদ্বোধন কর্তৃপক্ষকে আমরা অবশ্যই জানাবো ওনারা যে বিষয় সিদ্ধান্ত নিবে সেটা তোমাদের কাছে আমরা ফেস করব এবং প্রয়োজনে তোমাদের হয়ে আমরা তাদেরকে সুপারিশ করব সেই জিনিসটা যদি আশ্বস্ত করত লাঠি ছোটা দিয়ে না পিটিয়ে তাহলে শ্রমিকরা অবশ্যই কাজে ফিরে যেত কারণ শ্রমিকরা এটা কোনো সিরিয়াস দাবি করা নাই জাস্ট যেহেতু রমজান মাস দ্রব্য মূল্যের উদ্যোগতি লকডাউনের কারণে কেউ কোথাও যেতে পারছে না সব কিছু দাম বাড়তি আপনি পাওয়ার প্লান্ট থেকে কোনো শ্রমিককে বের হতে দিচ্ছে না আবার পাওয়ার প্লান্টের মধ্যে যারা ব্যবসা করতেছে আপনার পাওয়ার প্লান্টের বাইরে যে মূল যে চালের দাম ষাট টাকা পাওয়ার প্লান্টের ভিতরে সে চালের দাম কিনে খেতে হচ্ছে আশি টাকা যেখানে আলু বাইরে যদি বিশ টাকা বিক্রি করে সেখানে আলুর দাম বিক্রি করতে হচ্ছে পঁয়ত্রিশ টাকা প্রত্যেকটা জিনিস দুই গুণ দেড় গুণ করে দাম বৃদ্ধি হয়ে শ্রমিকদেরকে কিনে খেতে হচ্ছে তাহলে শ্রমিকরা নিজেরা চলবে নাকি পরিবারদেরকে টাকা পাঠাবে মানে তারা আর এইদিকে রোজা নিয়ে বেশিরভাগ শ্রমিক যেহেতু আমাদের দেশটা যেহেতু বেশিরভাগ শ্রমিক মুসলমান এখানে শতকারা পঁচানব্বই জন মুসলমান সবাই ম্যাক্সিমাম সবাই রোজা রাখে তারা যদি ইফতারটা সঠিকভাবে করতে না পারে ইফতারের দাম যেই যে ইফতার আপনি বাইরে পঞ্চাশ টাকা দিয়ে আশাট টাকা দিয়ে খেতে পারবেন সেখানে প্রতি ফিলেট ইফতার বিক্রি করতেছে দুইশো টাকা করে তাহলে শ্রমিকরা কোন দিকে যাবে তাদের রক্তকে ফানি করে তারা যে ইনকাম করতেছে নিজের জন্য সংসারের জন্য সেই টাকা যদি সংসারে পাঠাতে না পারে তাহলে শ্রমিকরা দাবি শ্রমিকদের দাবি না জানিয়ে সেখানে যদি হাত গুটিয়ে বসে থাকে যেখানে আট ঘন্টার ডিউটি দশ ঘন্টা করানো হচ্ছে সেখানে দশ ঘন্টার ডিউটি বারো ঘন্টা করানো হবে এক সময় যদি এটা সহ্য করতে হতো চোদ্দ ঘন্টা শ্রমিকদেরকে ডিউটি করতে হবে তো আমরা আপনাদের মাধ্যমে দাবি জানাচ্ছি আপনারা সঠিক নিউজটা আপনারা দেখেন আপনাদের একটা প্রতিনিধি দল ওখানে যান গিয়ে যা শ্রমিকদের সাথে কথা বলুন এবং এখানে যেই যে নায়ক যারা নায়ক এই ঘটনার সাথে ঘটনাটা শ্রমিকদেরকে যারা উসকে দিয়েছে অর্থাৎ যারা অতর্কিত হামলা করেছে সিকিউরিটি প্লান্টের যারা সিকিউরিটি যারা পুলিশ পার্টি রয়েছে এরা এবং ওখানে যারা ব্যবসা দোকান দান দিয়ে যারা ব্যবসা করতেছে শ্রমিক সামলা দিয়ে যারা ব্যবসা করতেছে ওরা মিলেই যে শ্রমিকের উপর যে অতর্কিত হামলা করলো একটা শান্তিপূর্ণ একটা দাবি তারা সমাবেশ করতেছে সেখানে যে অতর্কিত হামলা করলো এটা কিন্তু কোন ধরনের কাম্য না শ্রমিকরা হচ্ছে অশিক্ষিত মানুষ সবাই শিক্ষিত এমন না সর্বোচ্চ শ্রমিকরা পড়ালেখা করলে এস এস সির বাইরে করে নাই কেউ হয়তো এস এস সি পর্যন্ত করে আছে এখানে অনেক অনেক শ্রমিক আছে আমাদের সাথে যারা হেল্পার হিসেবে কাজ করে আমাদের সাথে সেখানে অনেকের কলেজ যেহেতু দীর্ঘদিন ধরে বন্ধ স্কুল যেহেতু দীর্ঘদিন ধরে বন্ধ মাদ্রাসা যেহেতু দীর্ঘদিন বন্ধ তারা আয়ের রোজগার হিসেবে যেহেতু সংসার চলতেছে না সেখানে তারা টেম্পোরালি শ্রমিক হিসেবে ঢুকছে হেল্পার হিসেবে কাজ করতেছে এই যে আপনার আহমেদ রাজা নামে একটা ছেলে মারা গেছে ওনার বাড়ি গন্ডা মারাই এই ছেলেটা ওই গন্ডা মারা পাশে একটা মাদ্রাসায় দাখিলের ছাত্র ছিল যেহেতু দীর্ঘদিন ধরে মাদ্রাসা বন্ধ তার বাবা নাই এক ভাই বিদেশে আটকে আছে আসতে পারতেছে না আর এক ভাই ফঙ্গু সেই আপনার একটু ওটিজম টাইপের 
যার কারণে সে খাস করে খেতে পারে না এই ছেলেটা উপার্জনের যেহেতু বড় ভাই বিদেশ থেকে টাকা পাঠাতে পারতেছে না দ্রব্য মূল্যের উদ্ধৃতি দিয়ে সেই হিসেবে এসে গত দুই সপ্তাহ আগে ওখানে যোগ দিছে কাজে যোগ দিছে হেল্পার হিসেবে সে কিন্তু লাশ হয়ে বাড়িতে ফিরল আপনারা হয়তো ফেসবুকে বা মিডিয়ার মাধ্যমে দেখছেন কিনা জানি না তার বড় ভাই ওমান থেকে একটা খুব কান্না জড়িত কণ্ঠে ভিডিও ফুটেজ পাঠাইছে তিন চার মিনিটের সেটা অত্যন্ত হৃদয় বিদারক তার আশা বর্ষা ছিল সে বিদেশে গেছে বাপ যেহেতু নাই এই ভাই বোনদের দায়িত্ব না হতো বিদেশে গেছে যেহেতু ওখানেও কাজ নাই সে ওখানেও আসতে পারতেছে না তার বাইক অনুরোধ করে সে কাজে বাড়াইছে আর সেই তার বাইক লাশ হয়ে বাড়িতে ফিরল এরকম প্রত্যেকে এখানে আপনি দেখবেন যারা মারা গেছে সবার বয়স বিশ বাইশ আঠারের মধ্যে সবগুলো স্টুডেন্ট এই যে আপনার ফেডের দায়ে তারা চাকরি করতে গেছে বিষয়টা তো এখন আপনারা যদি একটা প্রতিনিধি দল ওখানে যান এবং স্থানীয় এবং যারা শ্রমিক সবার সাথে কথা বলে আপনার ওখানে যেই বিষয়টা এটা আপনারা ভালোভাবে দেখে একটা ভালো রিপোর্ট পাবেন আপনারা শ্রমিকদের পক্ষে যতটুকু স্ট্যান্ড নেওয়া দরকার আমি মনে করি আপনারা স্ট্যান্ড নিলে ভালো হবে শ্রমিকরা এখন খুব আতঙ্কের মধ্যে আছে যেহেতু কোন শ্রমিক সংগঠন নেই কোনো ট্রেড ইউনিয়ন নেই এখন শ্রমিকদেরকে কিভাবে কাজে ফিরাবে এখন শ্রমিকরা ভয় পাচ্ছে তাদেরকে যদি কাজে ফিরিয়ে আবার যদি তাদেরকে অ্যারেস্ট করা হয় কোনো হারে তাহলে তারা কোথায় যাবে তারাই মামলা চালানোর জন্য টাকা কোথায় পাবে যেহেতু অজ্ঞাতনামা নামে আড়াই হাজার জনের নামে মামলা হয়েছে আর একটা বিষয় হচ্ছে ওখানে শ্রমিকরা গন্ডগোলের পরে তারা যারা আহত হয়েছে তাদেরকে নিয়ে কেউ মেডিল গেছে যারা মারা গেছে তাদেরকে রক্ষার জন্য কেউ এগিয়ে গেছে আর কেউ আত্মরক্ষার্থে ফালিয়ে গেছেন সেখানে আশেপাশে যারা সিন্ডিকেট ওদের এলাকা হচ্ছে প্রজেক্টের সাথে লাগানো তারা সেখানে লুটপাট করছে সেখানে গাড়িতে অগ্নিসংযোগ করছে সেখানে আপনার যে শেড গুলো ছিল ছোট ছোট ডরমোটের গুলো ছিল শ্রমিক টাকা সেগুলো তো আগুন ধরে দিয়েছে এটা এখন শ্রমিকের উপর চাপানো চাচ্ছে এলাকা শ্রমিকের চেয়ে বাইরে শ্রমিক ছিল বেশি তারা কি তাদের শরীর নিয়ে পালাবে নাকি এরকম ভারী রড বিভিন্ন মেশিনের পার্টস নিয়ে তারা কিভাবে ওখান থেকে চালাবে ফালাবে সবগুলো এলাকার যারা সিন্ডিকেট ছিল ওরা ওরা নিজেরা লুটপাট করে ঘরে নিয়ে রাখছে এখন সেটা দোষ চাপাচ্ছে শ্রমিকের উপর আমরা সেটা পত্রিকা মারফত জানতে পারতেছি আমার এই বলার ছিল আপনাদের কাছে ধন্যবাদ ধন্যবাদ আমার বক্তব্য নেওয়ার জন্য ট্রান্সলেশন বিকজ উই হ্যাভ এন ইন্টারন্যাশনাল কমিউনিটি দ্যাট হ্যাজ কাম টুগেদার and i really thank everyone who's joined us at such short notice uh, for this um, press conference so he thank you vidya and uh, thank you mr uh, abdul goni though it's his pseudonym so uh, there are there were lots of emotion i don't know how much i can translate but uh, uh, he uh, said that he was working for uh, 3 months in this power plant as a welder uh and he also pointed that secretary is currently working in this power plant and uh, etc uh, this is a labor contractor who is uh, actually supplying the labor for this power plant at this moment but uh, this etc uh, uh, already subcontract some influential groups like uh, chairman and members they are actually recruiting the people or the uh, labor in this power plant so uh, he also said that uh, they are taking 5000 bdt for uh, uh, giving the job for every labor and uh, 2000 bdt for uh, the clocks and they also uh, getting 10% from the every labor's salary in every month right at this moment and there are several uh, issues he also pointed that there is no overtime uh, regulations in this power plant 
previously they were working for 12 hours a day but uh, after the covid attacks and the lockdown uh, they are working for 10 hours now so the wages is quite low it is around uh, 1800 uh, 18000 in bangladeshi taka with no overtime and he also said that there is no trade union at this moment for uh, this particular power plant uh, so uh, as there is no trade union so uh, the uh, laborers they were gathered uh, uh, in a place and uh, they were discussing uh, uh, to the authority that uh, they have to uh, set the working hour to eight hours uh, for uh, this ramzan and covid issues and they also demanded that they have to give some time for the juma prayer uh, as uh, this is uh, is predominantly by muslim communities so they have demanded for a time for the prayer so uh, and they also demanded that as uh, they are getting the salary in 40 to 45 days uh, after 10 to 15 days uh, by finishing the months, so as the Eids are coming, Eid is coming, so uh, they have demanded that uh, the, the salary should be given in the you know, timely manner. So these were uh, some of the demands, but uh, in the 17th April, I mean the collusion date, uh, 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 he said that uh, they were demanding this sort of thing and gathering in a place and they said that we will not work before uh, the authority should uh, fulfill our uh, lawful demands. So at a time, uh, the authority came to them and said that uh, we are not in a position to discuss this sort of matters to, uh, to you, rather you should go back to work. Uh, so after that, uh, uh, on a sudden uh, period of time, uh, there were some police and uh, he pointed out that maybe they are uh, some from uh, vested interest groups from the local contractors like chairman and members. They uh, uh, suddenly started uh, beating themselves and as a uh, reaction, the uh, laborers are uh, started uh, throwing some bricks and some other material to them and suddenly the firing started he pointed that uh, four people uh, dead on the spot and one dead after uh, uh, reaching the hospital and there were 20 people uh, was uh, were uh, injured by bullet at this uh, point so after that, he also pointed that the issues is uh, now the media is reacting in a, a peculiar manner. He said that several media is not pointing the uh, demands and the lawful uh, protest of these laborers. But uh, he wanted that uh, the media and the other uh, communities will uh, talk to them about uh, their demands and what actually happened in this power plant in that particular day. After that, he also said that uh, the district administration has formed uh, a committee to uh, investigate this matter, which is led by uh, local superintendent of police and uh, the deputy inspector general. And he also said that as police is uh, putting fire on them, so how this uh, investigation committee will um, give an unbiased report. So he also mentioned uh, the previous uh, collusion of uh, 4th April 2016, where four uh, uh, people were dead. And in 2017, uh, also another uh, uh, person died in this uh, particular power plant. So uh, he uh, finally concluded that if authority wanted uh, to negotiate with themselves about their demands, something like uh, some official or uh, the authority people come to them and talk about this issue, this can be handled in a very peaceful manner, which is not a very big deal uh, at that time. But the sudden attack from the police and the vested interest groups uh, has made uh, this thing happen.
and finally he uh, said that the most of the uh, labor died at this power plant in this pollution and also working in this power plant they are mostly student as we looked uh, in the newspaper that most of the people uh, are in the age range of 70 to 22. He also mentioned a, a name, um, Mr. Ahmed Reza, who died uh, in this pollution, uh, who is working for this, uh, working on this power plant for only two weeks before uh, these things happened. And he was only 22 years old. He was a student from the uh, uh, madrasa as uh, this lockdown happened and uh, the uh, we are all in a crisis. So there are several people who are uh, working in this power plant in a part-time basis. They are not uh, the actual labor. So these are the people actually sh uh, shot in this incident. And finally, uh, he demanded a, a, an unbiased investigation to these matters and uh, bring justice to them. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to him so much. And we also thank um, those from the ground who brought us that story. Uh, remember, they're already under tremendous pressure, um, not enough support. They feel like there should be a team that goes there and speaks to them like a, like a fact-finding team from those gathered here today. Uh, and there are um, cases against them. Um, we now move on to a prominent civil society voice from Bangladesh. Uh, advocate Sayyida Rizwana Hassan has always been in the forefront seeking justice for uh, victims um, of both environmental and other crimes. Um, we've taken a, a minute of silence for our fallen brothers and we firmly resolved to uh, strive for justice for them. Uh, Murtaza Ali, um, was killed on 4th of April 2017 at Bashkali. Uh, Ankur Ali also for the same coal fired plant. Um, Zakir Ahmed, uh, Mohammed Zahir Ahmed, um, they were around 45, 55, uh, 52, 35, and Mohammed Ali also 35, who was killed in February 2017. Uh, more recently, the five that we just lost on 17th of April, 2021. Um, Advocate Sayyida Rizwana Hassan, please tell us what we can do and what, um, uh, what do you think uh, has happened? How can we move forward? Uh, Rizwana Hassan, of course, is a lawyer of the Bangladesh Supreme Court, and I like to call her the star lawyer there. And um, she's also chief executive of Bela, which is... <coughs> Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association. Apa? Thank you very much, Vita. Nice to see you after long, but it's a very sad occasion. Yes. Uh, see, I, I think uh, if you want me to respond to what we need to do, uh, I understand this is a press conference and we should not be talking about... Our yes, I'm sorry. I meant that um, uh, basically uh, explain to us what happened um, though we've heard it, but uh, a lawyer's perspective on how it was wrong on so many fronts. Yeah. And also as civil society in Bangladesh and uh, the, uh, the international community, uh, do you think that this is something that we should pursue and, uh, and stay the course on seeing that justice is done? Is there any hope for it in Bangladesh? You know the situation uh, better than us. Uh, yeah, thank you, Vita. First is, I mean, it's nothing but another instance of culture of impunity. Uh, we see that the state is actually, the government is actually siding by the corporation, and it is not considering killing laborers as something illegal or something that for which they should, you know, uh, be answerable to. Uh, so it's a long-standing culture of impunity that unfortunately is getting institutionalized in Bangladesh. I don't understand uh, some simple equations here. If S. Alam Group is taken to be one of the most moneyed industrial entity, business house of the country, 
why can't they pay salary to their laborers? I don't see any uh, reason as to why asylum group or the Chinese sponsors can evade responsibility because even if the entire labor um, appointment, uh, payment, administration is done through subcontracting, there is something called vicarious liability. So the owner will have to be held responsible for the behavior of the contractor and subcontractors. So that's uh, one point. The other point is the clear conflict of interest. Now a thing has happened. Uh, before going to the conflict of interest issue, could the police do it? Could the law enforcing agencies open fire? This is not the first time that it has happened in this particular um, coal plant. It happened in 2016 as well when people were protesting against land acquisition. And the usual narr narrative that came from the government was uh, the other political party, the opposition political party is triggering this tension. And that is why you're seeing all this agitation. People in general are very happy about the power plant. They have no objection to it. So it's the blame game. But they actually never wanted to make this plant socially acceptable. I can say it without hesitation that this particular power plant does not have social acceptance. If it had people's acceptance, then police did not, police wouldn't have been required to open fire twice, once in 2016 and again in 2021. That again in the month of Ramadan, that again amidst this COVID crisis. So this project to me does not have the uh, people's uh, mandate. It doesn't really have endorsement from the people. Uh, so we have this uh, very rich business houses who are implementing this uh, project. They're so rich. They have been given a tax exemption. They have also been fined by the government, which they can pay happily, but they can't pay their laborers. This is something totally unacceptable. So here I bring in the uh, role of the uh, Department of Labor into question. When someone says that employment appointment letters are not given, salaries are not paid in time, we are forced to work over time, we are forced to use toilets that are overflowing, we are forced to stay in inhuman living conditions, I see total absence of this department called Department of Labor. This is the legal point that I want to bring forward. Whether police could open fire, there is no reason, at least I don't see any reason how police could, under the existing law, open fire in a situation like this. Uh, th fourth is the filing of the cases. You see the two cases have been filed and I would definitely demand immediate withdrawal of these two cases. If cases have to be filed, then the first case will have to be filed against the sponsors of project. Why didn't they pay the salaries in time? What led to this agitation? So the cases have to be filed against the sponsors and the Department of Labor. What have they been doing? Uh, I definitely demand withdrawal of these cases because you see one case has been filed against 2,500 unidentified individuals. This is a way of harassing the people for an indefinite period of time. So whatever happens, you then bring in the laborers and tell them this is what they have been doing. This cannot go on. And, and I would assume that the, that the people will always remain unidentified because they never probably maintained any list of laborers because there was no appointment letters given. So this case, which we, those of us who live in Bangladesh, we know how the how this sort of police cases, where you don't really identify the exact accused people, can actually end up harassing the innocent laborers. So this has to be withdrawn. The other point, legal point that has been very validly raised by the uh, labor, you know, representative of the laborers, uh, that is the whole issue of conflict of interest. If the first incident of police fire was investigated through an impartial body, maybe through judicial members, probably this incident we could have avoided. 
Now you killed them in 2016. You again opened fire and killed five people in 2021. You have to answer to this. And we want a judicial inquiry. First to find out why the sponsors could not pay, why were the laborers angry, and what, if at all anything, justified the opening of the fire. So we want absolute independent uh, investigation and we want judicial uh, inquiry. We want co compensation for the laborers. I don't know, I mean, if you can at all compensate for lives, but you have to really be compensating. And my, uh, see, our government is very sensitive about its image. The fact that laborers are being repeatedly killed, is this doing any good to the image of the government? Is this doing any good to the image of the country as a democratic society? Yes, alone should, act, I mean, the UN principles on business and human rights should be strictly applied against these uh, sponsors because they have, it's not only that they, they were not paying salaries, they were not being respectful to the minimum human rights of the laborers. Uh, my final two demands would be that the government should scrap the deal with the sponsors. They're incapable of handling the deal. They're absolutely incapable of handling the deal. So that should be scrapped in order to save the country and the government from further embarrassment. And we should also be scrapping this project because Bangladesh loses 1% of GDP only on account of air pollution. It loses three to 5% of GDPs on account of corruption. So even if you have spent enough money after this project, I want that this particular scrapped project should be, to this particular project should be totally scrapped because I can't, a country can't on one hand receive an award for climate and on the other hand, promote coal-based power plant. So these are my final points, thanks. Absolutely, thank you, Apa. I think important points made. Uh, reparation, of course, um, for the victims of what happened, but also that uh, responsibility and heads must roll, the Labor Department, the police, uh, clearly um, uh, in the line of fire that uh, civil society needs to train um, their, uh, their barbs at. Um, it's also the government that needs to act to show that um, it responds to their workers and um, it should institute a judicial inquiry immediately and take action. Also the question of how could the police um, fire one and uh, fire above the knee uh, in whatever situation. Thank you, Apa, for those important points. Uh, I will call upon um, another strong woman, um, a leader from Asia, uh, from the Asian People's Movement on Debt and Development, APMDB, Livy Nakhbil. Um, good evening to everyone. Uh, it's already evening here in Manila, and it's our honor to be here as part of the press conference. Uh, the Asian People's Movement on Debt and Development is a coalition or an alliance of more than 50 movements and organizations across Asia, and they all join me in being enraged over what has happened, what has been done to the workers in the Bangshali coal plant. Uh, we heard immediately about it from our colleagues in Bangladesh, and it is yet again one uh, heinous act that has been done to many of our people across Asia in these very challenging times. It is already very livelihoods and the future, the present and the future of people, communities, not just in Bangladesh, but the world over because of the coal plants, uh, contribution to the escalation of the climate crisis, not to mention the harm that is being done to the whole planet itself. And now we hear that these companies that run these coal pl power plants do not even do, uh, have a fair and just treatment of their workers. It is very, very uh, angering to hear that they cannot even pay their workers properly, withholding salaries or paying them very poor wages. And when the workers exercise their rights to protest and to demand what is justly theirs, 
and then we hear about this brutality by the by the police and we hold of course the owners of the companies and all the financiers and vidya you have mentioned them all in your opening so i won't mention them all again but just a special mention to the s alam group the HTG development and Skepco 3 because they're the major uh, shareholders or owners of the plant and all the long list of financiers, especially international financiers. So we hold them accountable and responsible and they must give justice to what happened. But we cannot also uh, save or uh, we cannot take exception to the Bangladesh government because it is the police forces after all. So the Bangladesh government must also be held responsible because police forces are state forces and they must give justice to the workers immediately. And may we also take this opportunity to reiterate the call that all coal power plants in Asia must be closed. No more new plants and all plants be closed as soon as possible with just transition, of course, for workers and communities who are going to be affected. And again, calling on the owners of the coal plant and the Bangladesh government justice, not only for the atrocities done to the workers, including we, we condemn the filing of the case against the 3000 workers by the police. They must also make sure that the wages are paid properly and on time and might as well also increase the wages because we can we can probably guess that they are very very low wages thank you very much for this opportunity and we join all of you in solidarity thank you thank you liddy um as you and um, rizwana Appa both said uh, coal plants should be scrapped especially the bashkali coal fire plant in chattogram uh, there's also uh, the statement, the international statement that was, um, I'm sorry, I think we have a, a wrong screen share. Would I ask someone to please shut it down? Yes, thank you. Uh, so um, yesterday an international statement was brought out. Uh, it was piloted by the NGO Forum on ADB and a lot of us uh, came on board and signed up. Uh, this is an appeal not just to the larger community, but also, as both of them, both our speakers said, to the Bangladesh government to hold everyone responsible, the sponsors, uh, the owners, the EPC contractors, the subcontractors, everyone responsible, the financiers especially. I call upon the executive director of the NGO Forum on ADB, Ryan Hassan, who's seen a is in Bangladesh to please um, give us that perspective from the forum. Uh, thank you, Vidya. And I don't think I'll be adding anything new. Um, first, I'd really like to thank the affected community representative to be brave enough in this very, very risky and volatile time to speak up and give us a um, round reality scenario in his opening statement. And from what you've heard so far, I think it's quite clear what we witnessed was an absolute violation of human rights, and an absolute violation of the constitution of Bangladesh over a democratic assembly. And uh, as uh, Rizwana Appa also mentioned, this is a repeated offense, uh, which has gone by without no accountability. And uh, therefore the call for justice uh, has to be much, much, much more louder than ever before. Um, the reason uh, why I would also like to express thanks uh, to everyone, and that includes the international civil society community, uh, the national civil society community of Bangladesh, and all the workers who are with us, uh, that no longer is this issue something that we're going to hide under the carpet. It requires a lot of mobilizing and a lot of uh, shouting and screaming so that we are heard. And I think from that, from that anger and frustration and that need for justice, we, we came up with the statement and I hope it articulates a lot of your demands. I also will, I would like to thank Rizwana Appa for uh, giving us uh, some very important points actually. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Himanta wrote me an email that uh, there are some uh, new issues which we need to incorporate. So I'll just walk you guys over our key demands. So the demands of the statement are, we demand that all workers be paid their due wages immediately 
and that they be compensated for all the lost wages and all for the delays of payments, which was mentioned before, and an improvement of their working conditions. Uh, but most importantly, we demand the compensation uh, for the lives that were lost, and there is no compensation for human life. But as you can see, the, the, they're not calling them workers is also, uh, they're just kids. There are 19, 20, 21 year old kids who have just been shot. Uh, th this is just ridiculous. And I, I don't think this kind of loss of life can go out without question. Um, so the second demand um, is this, you know, this harassment of 3000 plus workers have been now been labeled as unidentified miscreants and now there is a criminalization of them for asking for justice so these false cases have to be removed and that's definitely our our immediate demand and these cases need to be dropped against the workers uh, we demand the strictest legal measures be taken by the government against the asylum group septo 3 hdg development group and all those involved uh, even the subcontractors who supported um, and enable this scenario where security forces just open fire, bringing, of course, the security forces themselves to account. Uh, we also demand that the workers have effective access to remedy through a fair, neutral, transparent investigation of this event. I think uh, Goni Bhai in the earlier speech from the local community said that one of the biggest concerns now is the independent inquiry, whether the investigation inquiry will truly be independent away from the syndicate on the ground. And that's something which we as civil society have to be mindful of. And I hope our journalist friends can help as well. Um, of course, we demand accountability of the financiers and not only the national financiers, but the international financiers constitute about $1.7 billion, uh, Bank of China, ABC, Kexim, CCB, China Development Bank, uh, CMB, PAB, all of them have to be held accountable. There's a complete failure of any form of safeguards in a infrastructure project and re-echoing the fact that you know this uh, climate summit is happening just around the corner the leaders summit uh, led by joe biden and uh, the incident just happened yesterday in bashkali coal power plant and the prime minister is going over to take an award uh, for leading climate change which is absolutely preposterous and this hypocrisy really needs to be called out and i have a feeling that a statement like this should go from multiple avenues to make sure that it hits all the right doors, both in the national uh, perspective, as well as the international and regional perspective. And your forum is thinking of sending it out to every multilateral development bank that we engage with. Uh, we definitely will look to our friends in Europe and the US to take it further up to respective ministries as well. Um, and there's just no space for coal power plants and thermal power plants at this day and age. And, this, this uh, particular incident shows you that uh, coal comes at the price of death. It just comes at the price of death. If you burn the coal, we're gonna die. And if you're gonna shoot the workers, we're gonna die as well. So um, I thank you all. Uh, and I hope everyone's gonna be a part of this uh, call for justice as we move forward. And it's gonna be tough and it's gonna be long drawn. Uh, so I hope we all have the stamina to do it. And thanks everyone for organizing. Thank you, Ryan Hassan, one for initiating that important statement and also for committing to be there for the long haul on this fight. Uh, yes, it's not going to be easy. We're going to get tired, but we should plod on for the 10 lives that are already lost. And of course, if the coal fired plant actually does come up despite everything, then there'll be so much more. Uh, there's blood on everyone's hands all, already, and we must see that uh, this must go no further. Uh, I call upon uh, another international ally of Bangladeshi groups uh, struggling on the ground, uh, Knud Bokhim, who's the lead campaigns on multilateral financial institutions from Orgewald in Germany, to please tell us what he thinks. He's been a labor leader also, and he can say things as clearly and plainly as they can be said. Cold pills, we know that. No, what do you have to say in solidarity? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Vidya. Yeah, and of course, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, our hearts go out to uh, the families of, of the victims, of course, and uh, uh, our deepest condolences go, go to them. Um, I am following uh, 
energy affairs in Bangladesh since uh, the mid uh, uh, zero years of the of this century. So for almost 15 years, and I must say that uh, coal in Bangladesh, uh, starting with Fulbari and now uh, uh, here uh, at this place, it's it's a blood trail with killings uh, uh, through uh, uh, police force and and it has to stop. It, Bangladesh uh, has signed uh, on and ratified uh, most of the human rights treaties and has an obligation to uh, to treat them, uh, the people fairly and especially uh, the police. Uh, protect and serve does not mean protect and serve um, the, the rich and powerful, but protect and serve the people. And uh, um, also, um, and, and our advocate friend knows it much better than I do because I'm not I'm not uh, uh, trained in law. But uh, I just looked it up, and and um, uh, Bangladesh has also ratified ILO conventions on the rights of workers, like the freedom of association, the right for collective bargaining. And so, if if workers demand uh, their rights, then uh, the state uh, has has an obligation to protect them. Um, and uh, just rightly, as Ryan uh, said, it's it's not just uh, a Bangladesh affair, and it's not even only a China affair, because most uh, of the companies and 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 uh, banks are from China. But I just um, just uh, take Sepco Three, uh, which is a subsidiary of uh, of uh, uh, Power China, and um, you know if you look up in in our database. Uh, um, uh, which we have published, uh, um, you can see that BlackRock, for example, a huge investment firm, has 16 million uh, worth of shares uh, in um, in Power China. Vanguard, another one, has 12 million dollars shares, uh, um, and and even in, from Europe, the uh, UBS Bank from Switzerland, Credit Suisse, and even from Germany, Deutsche Bank, they all have shares in Power China, and so. It's also up to them uh, uh, to to hold the management um, of Power China uh, accountable of what what they are doing with uh, with this investment money. And of course, this investment shouldn't go into coal, but that that's something which is it's is crystal clear. And so um, uh, it's now our task uh, in Europe and in uh, outside of uh, uh, outside of Bangladesh. And, and outside of Asia, to uh, to tell these investors uh, to uh, to show their responsibility and to act in the boards of of Power China. And with this, I I hand on to my colleague Nora because she wanted to say some sentences on on the Chinese angle, especially. Yes, thank you, Knut. Nora Sasmikat, who's a sinologist uh, with Urgewald and beyond. Nora, you are muted. One second. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, also from my side, um, all the feelings with the parents uh, who lost uh, their beloved ones. And I just want to highlight another um, aspect we really have to take care of, not only, well, as my colleague Knut said, for the international financiers of Power China, but especially uh, also on the Chinese companies and banks who are involved in this case. And this case is heavily financed by the all the Chinese big banks, uh, two policy banks and the four so-called commercial state banks uh, and uh, SEPCO3, which is a flagship company for the Belt and Road initiative. It holds like 50% market share in all um, Indian um, uh, uh, Indian um, sorry for it was <laughs> um, uh, uh, China power construction companies who are active in India. So uh, this is also a part of the Chinese initiate, initiated Belt and Road Initiative, uh, which uh, aims to be a green Belt and Road Initiative. So there are two angles which needs to be highlighted. The banks, the Chinese banks, and also the Chinese companies have to be held accountable, especially not only because the UN principle of 
inquisitiveness and human rights uh, applies, but also because Chinese internal regulations applies to these banks and companies, which include, for example, a, a compliance with the host country's laws related to investment, related to labor laws, related to labor rights, and especially respecting local customs and religious practices, which applies especially in this case where the laborers ask for special uh, time off for their religious practices. Um, so uh, this case really demonstrates very clearly um, that we have to um, take care for all these involved stakeholders and uh, pay much more attention to, to the new big player China in the framework of the Belt and Road. Thank you for that word of caution, um, Nora. And yes, we will keep our eyes peeled. As Mehdi has written in the chat, it's a green Belt and Road, which is colored here with the blood of innocent workers and laborers. Um, yes, and uh, and I had also heard, though it bears, of course, uh, greater inquiry, that the workers had first been to um, uh, the manager who was Chinese uh, with their demands, and uh, he had fought them off, which is why they took to the streets finally in desperation. Well, we will think of um, a citizen-led independent inquiry like Zakir Hussein Pai has uh, mentioned, uh, also um, to perhaps take it to the Asian Human Rights Commission for making all coal killers accountable. Uh, Petra Shell from um, Recourse, uh, she's the campaign's manager there, and she is also closely watching what has been unfolding when it comes to energy uh, and um, international finance in Bangladesh and the region. Petra. Thank you, Vidya, and thanks everyone. And first of all, um, like with others, I'd like to express my um, sincere condolences to the victims and their families um, and all the workers um, on the plant. This is really devastating news. Um, and a special thanks, of course, to the community representative who was brave enough to, to give such um, depth to the, the information about the situation and, and took the time out to speak to us as, as probably great risk to himself. Um, and thanks to NGO Forum and our partners in Bangladesh for pulling this together so quickly and to responding so quickly. And we're very grateful to be able to be part of, of this response. Um, so I'm calling you from London today, um, from Recourse, as Vidya mentioned, we're an international non-governmental organisation campaigning to redirect international finance flows towards greener and more sustainable um, and more inclusive development. Uh, we work in partnership with others to support communities and their struggles for the rights to be respected and their voices to be heard. Um, so as I mentioned, we're very saddened, we're very enraged by um, these unlawful killings over the weekend um, and also uh, to all the people who've also been injured. Um, and as, as, as others have said, these workers were simply exercising their rights in terms of protesting. They had, um, in fact, sought other means to negotiate their conditions that were already pretty awful. Um, and they were turned down. And this is, you know, they have every right to express um, their frustration and, and seek other means of, of getting their rights. Um, I know, as others have mentioned, in the context of the COVID pandemic, this is particularly serious, given that workers are already very, very vulnerable um, and they really need to be listened to. Uh, so this is completely unacceptable. Um, we're also concerned about the legal cases that have been filed against other workers. And as others have expressed, we'd like to see these dropped immediately. Um, justice must be served now. It's concerning that this is not the first time this has happened either. Um, and it seems that there's a pattern emerging both here in Bangladesh, but also around Asia, and it needs to be stopped. Um, as Knud and Nora has already elaborated um, uh, 
very thoroughly. And um, there are links here to international finance. And that's why for us who are not based in the country, are not based in Asia, we still have a responsibility to speak up, not just in terms of solidarity with our fellow brothers and sisters across the world, but also in terms of um, institutions that we are closely linked to that are actually um, undermining workers' rights in other parts of the world. Um, so to keep it brief, um, we join the calls that NGO Forum have put together with others. I'm, I've seen lots of lots of signatures to that, so I won't go into that in detail, apart from, of course, we want to see recourse for the communities, the workers and their families and for the losses of life. We want to see accountability in terms of the finance and the um, and in terms of um, a process that now goes into this and, and um, that there is remedy and that this process is fair and neutral and transparent. Um, in terms of the energy link, um, this is of course concerning that to us um, following the energy debates as this is a coal power plant. Um, and the fact that this happens so close to the International Climate Leaders Summit coming up this week is also concerning um, and sends a disturbing signal in terms of Bangladesh's priority as a country as well. Um, so without taking away from the, the, the hurt and of all the people, of the workers, we'd like to see Bangladesh now really taking a step away from coal power projects, including this one. And for the workers, we'd like to see a just transition for them. We want to see alternatives for them, other jobs that they can go into within the green economy instead. We don't want to leave them hanging. We want to see alternatives for them as we make this transition. Um, I'll, I'll finish there because uh, so much has already been said. Um, but again, heartfelt thanks for this opportunity to express our solidarity and our, our grief for the losses that we've seen and really our hope um, for um, a clear process going forward to address, address these issues. So thank you. Thank you, Petra. Thank you all who've um, you know, expressed their solidarity um, and pain. Um, Kazi Zahid Iqbal says the government should inquire about the allegation that some people attack the agitating workers wearing a police uniform. That, of course, can be a very serious um, allegation. Um, there is um, the longer inquiry and the longer reparation and uh, the search for justice uh, for wrongs done right now. But I think one immediate step that we can expect from the Bangladesh government is the, uh, the setting away of the cases against the workers and the fact that it is just unnamed workers means it's a democracy sword um, on anyone who wants to uh, take up the cause of the workers or even uh, you know um, express their dissent as to how the workers are being treated. Um, we will now call upon a final Bangladeshi voice, somebody who was um, uh, the person immediately behind the Bangladeshi community, um, uh, you know, speaking up. I, I request him to um, gi uh, give us his thoughts in two to three minutes. Barrister Jyotimai Borua from, um, where are you? Barrister, there you are. I know you've been following this very closely from the time it burst upon the scene. Please tell us what you think. Thank you, Vidya. I've been um, hearing all the voices raised from the local people and also from the international community. Um, I thank you for organizing uh, this, pro this program within a short notice. Uh, just to add some of the legal uh, issues, what uh, Rizwana Hassan already said. Um, your question were to uh, whether police can start shooting like this or not. What are the relevant laws? As uh, Dr. Jahed Iqbal also raised a very pertinent question that some people wearing police uniforms were also involved in the shooting. So these are serious allegations if you think uh, in terms of the legal proceeding. There are certain laws we follow in Bangladesh uh, for the police section. So, uh, like we have the police Act, which has been enacted in 1861, that is the same as India, so far I, I remember. And we have a police regulation of Bengal, which has been enacted back in 1943. These two laws are the guiding laws, which 
explains the rule of engagement. If he, if there was an unlawful activity, then the police had certain responsibilities to follow in accordance with these two laws. They were supposed to warn them that they are going to use force if they don't disperse, if they don't go away. Then if they become unruly and violent, then only they could use weapons or other mode of uh, force, not necessarily straight away starting uh, firing at them. So that in, in this police regulation of Bengal, it says that should be the last resort. If all other means fails, then only you could use your firearms. But again, no police constable or even a sub-inspector of police has the legal authority to start shooting at the labor. The authority needs to come from the higher police ranking officials from the, of the country. Then if you um, look into these incidents, then if a shootout happens, then the local police needs to file a report within a shortest period of time to the Ministry of Home Affairs. Then there should be a, a regular investigation by the higher police authority. And then a, a magistrate should inquire into the matter according to the law. A magistrate would inquire into the matter to, to see whether the shooting was justifiable or not. In any of these cases in the past, for example, past 10, 15 years, we have not seen these legal provisions are followed by the law enforcing authorities or by the government at all. Not a single incident you can find in the last couple of years. So it, our clear demand, though most of the speakers have already raised this concern, our clear demand is an independent judicial inquiry needs to be taken place. Then after detecting the actual problem and who are the perpetrators here, why the shooting incident was taken place, the government should take stern action against them. This is our first priority. Then to pay off their wages, compensation issues, this comes the secondary issue. This is obviously very important and dropping the cases against them, this is because this is creating terror among other people and the local people as well. Local people are even scared of giving us the actual account of what actually happened on that particular day. Because of these cases, it says, uh, 2,500 unknown um, unknown people were involved in this. So this is a scope. You can fill in the gap sort of thing. You can you can arrest anyone in the name of uh, being in, uh, for his involvement in this particular incident. So that's why these cases need to be dropped. This is this is really bad bad incident we we see in every time. The police kill people, then police files cases again. Even if you look into other incidents, not in, not in particularly labor issues, labor incidents, even in other uh, police shootout cases, they are the first persons, they are the first people who goes to file a case against those people, against the victim. So this needs to be stopped. And we definitely, definitely demand accountability from the investors and finances as well, SLM and other subcontractors need to be brought into justice for this atrocity against the labor. This is our strong demand, and we would like to um, request all our international friends as well to raise their voices as well and keep demanding this until we achieve them. Because this, is, this cannot go on like this. Every time a shootout happens, every time some illegalities happen, we raise our voice and at some point of time, a new incident takes place, and we we tend to forget the old one. Like the 2016 incident, if you remember, the process of acquiring the land, the asylum group had no legal authority to acquire land as per law. Then they were given all the authorities. They were using the government forces or the law, law enforcing agencies to grab the land from the local people. Then they were a shootout in 2016 because lo local people resisted. They didn't want to give away their homestead for establishment of this coal based power plant. So even we could not do justice to those people at that relevant time. 
I hope that you remember at that time there were some people who were shot and they were handcuffed in the hospital, getting medical treatment in the hospital when they were handcuffed. Yeah, according to the law, even if you look into the, the police regulation of Bengal 1943, it clearly says you cannot handcuff a person, an injured person, while he was taking taking medical treatment. Then we had to raise voice on that particular point as well. I'm just giving you the 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 mental condition, the the thinking way of thinking of this uh, government and other agencies that they can go on doing like this. So that's why with this time, I request all our friends to raise this, um, their demands, raise their voice against this atrocity. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Advocate Jyotibai Barua from uh, Life and Nature Safeguard Platform. There is one question. I know that it is the time of iftar um, coming on very quickly. Um, can I just read out the question in the interest of time? This is Stefan from the Union of Catholic Asia News. Uh, his question is, what do you think? Why the Bangladesh police um, uh, shot at protesters? Um, and uh, why did the Bangladesh government uh, not take any action against the police? Is the Bangladeshi government standing by the power of the police? So definitely, as Barrister Jyotimoy Borua uh, brought up, uh, it's a whole chain of command that is responsible. But a specific question, if any of you can quickly answer, and then we should close very quickly. There are other suggestions coming from the floor uh, about um, a public interest litigation to be filed on behalf of workers. Um, and um, and whether U.S. groups, one second. Does anyone want to um, respond to uh, the questions from Stefan? I think Jyotida can go. Jyoti, Jyotimoy Barua, can you? Thirty seconds, please. I think I think the answer is very much obvious, and everybody knows what is happening here. That's why we always keep mum when questions like this come to us, because this is too dangerous to answer this question. Uh, obviously, you can guess what the answer is. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Jyotir Maidai. And uh, I think Shomo Datta is saying that from our own experiences of responding to similar happenings, he would request that Bangladeshi groups organize a multi-group visit to Pash Khali at the earliest, which gives immediate courage to cornered people and puts the government and corporates into a defensive position. This, of course, has been also suggested by several uh, people here. Um, also, uh, Shomo asked, can the U.S. Uh, environmental justice groups be mobilized to raise this during the upcoming climate summit of 40 nations? Um, that would be, I think, a very good thing to do. Um, if um, you may permit me to uh, please, I, I know Rahman, do you want to ask a question? Then you... Um, right. Quick question. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, I am uh, Muribar Rahman, uh, PSA NCC Bangladesh. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for the part to the participants, all participants who are discussing these issues. Uh, we raise uh, the demand also. Uh, we agree uh, with the uh, discussioners uh, that uh, okay. the the family. Thank you. Huh. Thank you for saying in solidarity. I'm trying to close before iftar. I'm so sorry. Uh, Sekandar has also said um, uh, the issue of workers must be raised at the Department of Inspection for Factories and Establishment also to resolve together with the Labor Department. I'll call upon, um, uh, I think, um, I'll call upon uh, Professor, is, is he a professor? No, he's a doctor. Dr. Ka Maruful Islam, who's the convener of the Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt. And yes, he is a professor at Dhaka University. Um, Dr. Kazi Maruful Islam, I, I call upon you to please um, close. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, dear colleagues, distinguished participants, media friends, uh, and uh, our friends from the local uh, area. And um, uh, just like I, I condemn uh, this heinous act, and also I uh, uh, I, I, I 
send my uh, condolences to the families. I mean, just to close, uh, our, our, our participants have already articulated the demands and uh, expressed their solidarity. And on behalf of uh, Bangladesh uh, Working Group on External Date, uh, I would like to thank all of you uh, for your uh, strong voice, for your analysis, and for your uh, solidarity uh, with this event. And uh, uh, since we don't have much time, I don't want to take any more. But uh, 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 one point is that, look, this is this is not an event of Bashkali only. This is not an event of, of Bangladesh only. This is an international event. This has an, uh, a humanity dimension. So we have to consider from that perspective, and we must bring all those uh, stakeholders who are responsible, especially uh, uh, government of Bangladesh, Department of Police, Department of Labor and Inspection, and uh, uh, SLM Group, and uh, uh, their Chinese counterparts, particularly uh, CEFCO 3, P PWG Development Group, and all the financiers uh, to, uh, to justice. And we have to hold them accountable through all possible means at the local level, national level, and also at the international. So let's work together and let's let's make our voice stronger for the rights of the workers and uh, and and let's 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 make our uh, uh, this this lovely planet a green and happy living place so with this note i again i want to uh, thanks to all the organizers particularly the course ap amdd and uh, clean bangladesh and uh, um, and also uh, or other organizations in you from on uh, adb so all of you, thank you very much. And uh, uh, we shall meet again for uh, following up the next step. Thank you very much. Have a safe stay. I know, Professor, the new uh, convener of the Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt. We expect um, a lot of things to happen under your able leadership, sir. Uh, thank you. And let's keep expressing our solidarity with the workers who have become victims uh, and uh, and uh, continue this call for justice. Thank you.